child. Um, education is extremely important to us. Very. mothers teach here. This is not a traditional school. This is like a school resource or a homeschool hub. Okay. So we call it the school, but it's not really like a public school or a charter school. It's each room has its own purpose and its own people using it. Okay. It's, it's called the Edson Academy and you know, but it's been years and years so we are trying to you know, fix it up. And it has, because when we moved here, you know, when we got the school back, all the walls needed patching. They've all been patched and painted. We've tried, you know, just fixing a million things. But let me show you what we still need. Now here we have a, a computer lab. This is based on refurbished computers provided by Gary Taylor. So these are donated computers, is that right? Yes, they are. And so we also have donated speakers. We need webcams. Um, yeah, we need help. This is, it's primitive right now, but it is being used. Proof. <laughs> we, we put in a library, which I'm really excited about. It's just one little room. And come on in. Okay, so it's not organized yet. There's no library system like a checkout system. We're just trying to fill it up with appropriate books. If somebody wants to donate books, what we tell them is the FLDS like things that are realistic. They don't like fantasy, things that are not real. So any, it can be fiction as long as it's realistic. We, we're just started here, but we have tried to put things in kind of general categories. So we need volunteers. And room for more, right? We've got room for more. Yeah. All right, Catherine, we're gonna peek in here. Yeah. Okay, just kind of explain what's going on, what you do. We're allowed 10 students per class. So it's small, so they can get the help they need. And we're very fortunate to be able to rent this space. And we really could use some help with repairs. You're able to use this building for your own family's education as well, and other families will use it as yeah, well. Yeah, I mostly teach my grandchildren and then my sister's brother, my brother and sister's children. Oh, okay. So what are some of the things that you feel like you're lacking that would really make a big difference? Hot water. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's some like sheetrock repairs and... I noticed a, is it a wood burning stove in the hallway? Uh-huh. Is that, That's the source for heat for the whole building, is that right? Yes, as you see I use an oil door. Oh, right. <laughs> I just shut my doors when it's on. And... So her program that she does is a public school that is designed for, for like micro schools. Okay. It's, it's a not, micro school. So this is her class. I see. Not every class has the same, the same program. I see. I'd like them to be able to have this room without paying rent. You know, it's right. only, I mean, it's not very much, but still it, we have to share the utilities. So what do you say to people who say, well, the FLDS don't educate their children. Some might not, but most of us do. And I'm here trying to help some of those that were having a hard time. That's right. That's because sometimes children don't respond real well to their mothers, but they will better to their grandmother or to someone else. Right. right. So that's what we're trying to facilitate, education, and give her, like she shouldn't have to worry about anything but teaching these children. Right. So we have problems with the plumbing, you know, we have, we have leaks, we don't have central air or heating, we have, you know, the floors are not great in many cases, we don't have a playground yet. So Christine, you're trying to create a space 
for these a space that's appropriate you know for the teachers and the kids but none of that you don't get any funds from the state none okay whatsoever although I am happy to say that this building was approved for this program it had to have a certain level of safety so what do you what are some of the educational things that you do can you explain we do Lexi, which is English, phonics, spelling, reading, and we do math. We have a math program that's really well. And they can do Khan Academy, so they can learn by language. Anything is at their fingertips. What, what's the age range of the kids that... It's I kindergarten do? to eighth grade. Okay. So right. it's a big range. Yeah, sure. And I noticed you had some art supplies out over there. Yeah, we do painting. They love to draw. I'm starting to see that the education that's received by children in the earlier years, right, is incredibly important for this opportunity to go on to college and to have successful oh, careers. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, with the school here, I mean, we had most of our schools taken from us. Right. And to get this one back, then I said, yes, tell them I want it, personally, because I'm FLDS. And so it took a whole year to get it back. And um, we've used this school in particular kind of like a hub so that we can have resources and internet to do online, um, a library to have books that you wouldn't have at home or maybe reading opportunities for children that needed extra help or ones that wanted extra knowledge. And also we have a lot of curriculum that's donated to us. We have had some and we always are welcoming other supplies, you know, like your basic pencil, paper, crayons, you know, paint, stuff like that, because right. that's always hard to come by. But everything here has been donated. Right now we do need a certain amount of furniture, like folding chairs. We have a big assembly room with no chairs in it. Mm -hmm. And it's a big beautiful room that just got finished, fixed up. You know, things like carpet, new carpet, because it's an older building. It's yeah. been here 20 plus years. Yeah. We're going into the boys' room. This is not the first time I've done this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nor me. Come on in. Okay, so we did paint this. This was a horrendous. So we painted it. Volunteers came. And so that's decent. But look here. In this stall, there's no door and there's no toilet, but there is a, an interesting place to sit. <laughs> okay. Here we have a science lab, but the science lab is more appropriate for the high school age children. So we had younger children downstairs, and then we have the beginning of our science lab. You know, we have real microscopes, we have you know, weights and, and chemicals and vials and so on. Again, everything donated out of the kindness of people's hearts. And we have an amusing <laughs> and terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we need a little more money to add that to the list. Yeah. Now here we have a room for geography, but this room is um, it's about to start. The geography and science lab, those classes are not like all day. It's come at a certain time, do your thing, and, and then come yeah, back. You know okay. what I mean? Sort of like a um, once a week kind of class, or twice uh, a week. Or okay. These were donated. I'm so excited to tell you this. These desks were donated from the Colorado City Elementary School. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So the di both schools pitched in for us. Well, we've got this cottage, and we have several of the ladies, different people in the community, that make things, and they needed a way to to get their products out, and so we opened this little store to help them with that and bring in a little bit of money to <laughs> pay the bills for the school. <laughs> we did a Thanksgiving dinner over at the school. We had set up a big dinner and invited people that didn't have somewhere to go for Thanksgiving. Um, we did a little candlelight vigil stand with Charlottesville and did some anti-racism training, taught 
taught the children what Juneteenth was. That was actually quite educational for me too. We've done many art projects with the children to help them learn to make things that they can sell as well. Like we've got children that make things that we sell here as well. What's going forward? What's still needed? We're constantly needing help with mostly educational supplies. We, we realize that the school is not just a, a space for families to teach their own children, but it's really become a resource for the whole community and surrounding areas. Um, but if people want to send supplies, is there a good way to find out um, what supplies are needed or where to send those? We actually have a wish list on the Voices for Dignity website, and that's probably the easiest way. There's always a need for any school supplies, yeah. notebooks, pencils, art supplies. We always have people asking for those. Yeah. In my dream, we would have all these door frames fixed and we'll get there. We will get there. All right, so this is our teacher supply room. We had a lot of educational posters donated and what we did is we let the, the mother teachers in the various classrooms come and take any posters that they wanted. We're very grateful that, for this. So we have, you know, some, some more notebooks and, and file folders. We have educational resource books and pocket charts, notebooks, some paper, but you know, you have dozens of children being educated. This is not very much paper. All right. We do have some glue sticks and, you know, these kinds of things. But again, the FLDS have been through so much. Starting homes in other places, you know, using up all their resources just for survival. What we didn't want is for their educational opportunities to diminish because they didn't have any funds left. So anything we can do to try to facilitate that, that would be great. that you want to say about either the school or Voices for Dignity? I am so glad that we have this school, that we have something to work with. It's kind of a shell as far as getting where we want to be. Um, we've been just nip and tuck to even keep it going. Yeah. And we barely keep the power and water. <laughs> you right. know, it just, we're grateful. Somehow yeah. it works out, but it's...